A synthetic opioid first developed in the 1950s is falling back into the hands of Americans. It's nicknamed Frankenstein opioids. Public health officials say nitazines are up to 40 times stronger than fentanyl, and they may be added to street drugs without a user not even knowing. McGill University Office for Science and Society director, also chemistry professor, Dr. Joe Schwartz, is live this morning. Uh, why don't you give me the uh, uh, chemical rate of decomposition? No, I'm just kidding. You're a chemistry professor. I had to start with a joke, right? Good morning, and thank you for joining us. Good morning. So how do this group of drugs, and I don't even know if I'm saying it right, nitazines, I don't, it, how do they get their nickname classic, Frankenstein right. opioids? <laughs> Well, actually, they go back to the 1950s and the Siba pharmaceutical company in Switzerland uh, that was looking for a safer alternative to morphine. Uh, morphine, of course, uh, has been around for millennia as a painkiller. It's extracted from the opium poppy, uh, but it has a downside. Uh, it is addictive and it can depress respiration. So there has been a constant effort to try to find uh, an analog of morphine that would take away pain, but without the addictive potential and without the, the respiration problem. And in the 1950s, Siba thought that they had a candidate for this in the group of uh, compounds called nitazines. It turned out to be very effective in mice, and you can check for the pain relieving effect in mice, and it's not a very pleasant way to do this, but they put mice on a hot plate and see how they raise their tail and how long it takes for them to jump off after being given a drug. Well, the nitazines worked well as pain relievers, However, it turned out that they had a safety profile that was even worse than morphine. So they were never marketed. A, a safety profile, do you mean they cause more of the issues that morphine did exactly. instead of less? Exactly, they, they are far more effective. So that's the opposite of what, what the, the goal was here. Absolutely, which is the reason that they were put aside and never marketed. And so now, how were they making it back into the hands of the public? Well, these days, of course, with the opiate crisis, uh, drug dealers are looking to meet the needs of the market. And because it is getting harder and harder to get their hands on fentanyl and oxycodone, they're looking for substitutes. But who now, knows how to manufacture these things? Like if, if they haven't been around since the 1950s, who even knows how to make them in order to use them? Unfortunately, it is not hard to make them. Anyone with a background in organic chemistry can do so. You can produce these in, you know, so-called underground uh, laboratories. However, it seems that the samples that are showing up on our streets today are coming from China. Uh, China has uh, a large number of unregulated labs that will produce anything that the customer wants. And uh, it seems that uh, they have uh, latched onto this and they are making, uh, they are synthesizing uh, the nitazines, which incidentally is a family of, of compounds, there are several different ones. And uh, they are selling it to drug dealers in North America, and that's how it's ending up on the street. Wow. Now, the trouble is wow. that they can, be, they can be mixed in with uh, fentanyl or with oxycodone. Uh, so that the, the user doesn't know that they're actually buying something sure. that is even more dangerous than what they think that they are buying. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.